finally back. It just got delivered. Let's go. Is this it? This is it. What do you think, Rainy? What do you think? Hey, come in here. <laughs> this is it. I've been waiting for this day for much too long. I bought it in July, but wasn't able to build it because I was moving. I built it in August, but after two days, it bricked. Artifacts everywhere. I contacted NVIDIA. I sent it on back. Wow, they taped this up very well. NVIDIA got back to me, said, hey, just ship it here, and we'll either send you a new one or we'll fix this one and send this one back to you. And now it's been, I don't know how many weeks that I've been waiting for this thing to come back. And it's finally here, freshly packaged, nice. I sent them back a bubble wrap in a box with the graphics card in it because I don't keep my boxes. I threw it away. So this one seems to be a brand new 2060 Super that they ended up sending me. And no, this isn't no YouTuber specialty. I didn't say, hey, I'm a YouTuber. You should, you should send me a new one. I said, hey, I bought this $400 and it doesn't work. So can you please send me one that works or fix mine? I don't care. I just want it to work as a 2060 Super should. <laughs> oh, if you didn't know, when this bricked, I had to throw my old GTX 970, the one that lied on its spec sheet and it's actually not as good as it said it was. Yeah, that's the one right there, five years old, sitting in a brand new PC build. So it's so nice to be able to have this. That's right, it had that packaging on it. It has this nice little uh, protector on it right there. And I knew I peeled all mine off. So unless they did a really good job of repackaging a refurbished one, this one is brand new. Whew, all right, let's get this put in there and pray it works. If it doesn't work, I'm gonna be very upset. However, I'm not gonna be upset at NVIDIA customer service because obviously they did a good job. So in terms of NVIDIA customer service, I give them an A plus. Now let's get real. I mean, they sent me a broken product, not the customer service, but NVIDIA, so they better replace it or at least fix it. But still, it was easy. I called them, they sent me an email with the shipping label. I put on the shipping label and packaged this all up and I sent it out. And this is about a week or two later. This one, out. All right, here we go. Ooh, that was satisfying. We're gonna have to get in closer for this one. Please. Oh, I'm an idiot. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> I forgot to plug in the monitor, so it got me worried there for a sec. But mind you, it didn't show any artifacts or crash the computer until I'll do something graphic intensive, like play a YouTube video and play Fortnite at the same time, or go into Premiere Pro and try to edit something. It'll just mess up. Like the first two days, it worked fine, last go around. But after that two days, it was complete crap. So. Let's hope that this isn't the case with this one. Let's hope that this is going to work like a 2060 Super should work. As a matter of fact, let's um, let's test it out a little bit. All right, may come a second that go around. I haven't played this game in a while, and in my defense, I did have that six snipe that you may have seen, but hey, we are holding like a solid 160 FPS when we're doing uh, normal gameplay. If you looked at the sky, 240 FPS, of course, because there's nothing to really look at at the sky, nothing rendering in, so nothing to hinder that FPS. And then barely, very rarely would it barely, for a millisecond, if that, 
blink underneath 100 FPS. And you all saw the graphics settings I was running in Fortnite. It was epic, medium, high, epic, high, medium. So that is pretty good. I think before I would have epic, low, 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 and then still maybe hit 150 FPS. Probably sit around 120 FPS on the old GTX 970. So considering I was running pretty decent settings in Fortnite and I was hitting around maybe 150, I'd say 160 on average FPS, pretty happy with that. Obviously this isn't a comprehensive, okay, let's uh, let's see the settings, let's see the benchmarks. I just want to make sure that artifacts didn't show up on the screen when I was playing a video game. So I got a little bit sick between then and now. I'm happy to report I'm feeling a little bit better. In all honesty, I should probably be drinking some hot tea, but I'm an American and we dumped all that crap into Boston Harbor back in 1773, so it's, it's hot black coffee for me today. <laughs> How about we run a few benchmarks here? Well, really, we're just going to run one. That's going to be the uh, Unigen Heaven. I just want to run through it, make sure my computer doesn't crash, my graphics card doesn't cause it to crash. We got OBS running in the background. That is my screen recording software for those of you who don't know. Instead of CPU Z, I'm going to just run Task Manager and check in performance so I can check out, you know, CPU, memory, and uh, GPU. We're actually going to keep that over here. We have uh, Ninja running over here as well, pop up task manager, and then we also have Heaven doing the benchmarking over here. And if I wanted like actual results, like optimal results, I wouldn't have any of this crap running in the background. But like I said, I'm trying to throw everything at it like a regular workload because I like to play video games and, and have something over here running or I'll edit a video and I'll have something over here running, what have you. And I want to make sure that it can handle it because on the previous one doing just this would artifact everywhere and crash the PC. So, y'all think I made a good decision with the 2060 Super? Everyone's saying yeah, the 5700 XT is on par with the 2070 Super, all while being the same price as the 2060 Super. The reason I got the NVIDIA card is because both of these monitors are NVIDIA G-Sync, and the 5700 XT at the time of my purchase of this card was only offered in the stock blower style, and I only heard bad things about that. So you think I made the right decision? Or do you think I'm a dumb and dumb for uh, getting this 2060 Super when I could have gotten a 5700 XT? Let me know in the poll right there. And I don't know if this helps my case or hinders my case, but my CPU is in fact the AMD Ryzen 7 3700X 8 core processor. Does that make me even more of a dummy and dumb for not getting the Radeon GPU? Or does that, you know, give me a little bit of leeway? Hey, at least he didn't go full NVIDIA and Intel. But for the benchmark, average FPS is 118.1. The score is 29.74. Min FPS is 9.2. Maximum FPS is 305.1. And I'll repeat myself here. I am running a few things in the background, like this stream right here. And I'll also mention that these are 2560 by 1440p monitors. This one is running at like 120 hertz, if I'm not mistaken, maybe 144. And I'll show you over here, obviously this just dipped because Heaven is no longer being displayed on the screen, but you can see the GPU was running at 99% basically the whole entire time. The CPU, while all this stuff is running, sitting at about 33% on average, and the memory is using up about 7.6 gigabytes out of my 32 gigabytes of RAM. So, not too shabby, that's 24% for the memory. Cool, I'm just happy that this whole entire computer didn't crash and artifact everywhere all over the screen. Like I said, all I was trying to do is make sure it wouldn't break when using a regular uh, load that I do on a day-to-day -day basis. And it's also past the amount of time in which it took the other one to break. I think the other one broke after two or three days. I actually edited a whole entire video while running videos in the background on the old one and it worked just fine. It exported just fine. I was really excited because the export time decreased by like, 90%. Okay, maybe more like 60%, but either way, I'm happy. Now I can get back into designing the logo for the new company that I'll probably end up scrapping and turning to Design Crowd or 99designs or a platform like that. Y'all ever use either of those? It's basically where you say, hey, I have this company, I want to do a logo like this, can y'all do it? And you pay a certain amount and you have like 50, 100, depends on how much money you spend, logo designers that'll come in and try to design your logo and then you go back and forth with a few that you like until you get a logo that you will own and use for your company. In the spirit of polls, if you use either of those or you have an opinion on either of those, vote up in the poll right there. I have two polls this video, going pretty well. And I don't mean to gloss over the whole logo thing or, or secret business thing. I've mentioned it in the past, never announced exactly what the business is. I gave a, a pretty good hint last video. I actually got a logo designed for that business. However, I had a little bit of a realization in the middle of you know designing and trying to figure everything out. I have a lot of the stuff figured out the name and the logo of the company, the logo in particular was very similar to another brand that I wouldn't really be worried about too much except for the fact that that brand 
has someone on YouTube that pushes that brand pretty hard and I don't wanna look like a knockoff or a copycat of that brand because in all honesty, I thought of this name, I thought of this logo, I got it designed, like I went to the full lengths and then somewhere along the way I'm like, huh, like I said, I made the realization this kind of is similar to that. I really like the name and the logo, like this was the type of logo that was gonna go with that name, but I just ended up, I'm changing the name altogether. So I'm gonna be changing the logo altogether so I can be my own brand and not appear like a copycat or, or, or an off an off brand of that other brand. And that's why this business is taking a little bit longer than I first anticipated because I just got demotivated and kind of put it on the back burner because I really like this brand idea and everything, but I just don't think it'll fit properly. and. There's just a lot going on in my head trying to figure things out with this uh, company and the launch of this business. So rebranding the whole entire thing before it even launches and going from there. And besides launching the business as a whole and, and growing this business, I'm really excited to be able to take y'all behind the scenes once I do launch it. I'm gonna, I've been recording a lot of the process into setting it all up. I'm gonna record the process, you know, 48 hours into the launch, 48 hours before the launch, kind of how I prep and take you behind the scenes of launching and growing a new business because this is a business where it's a it's a tangible product it is not an online business which in all honesty that would probably be smarter but everything i do right now is online develop you know coding that's online youtube that's online anything else that's related to those two emails that's online so i wanted to have something that is as tangible that i can have in my hands i just like building things i like building businesses up i mean i built this youtube channel from scratch i'm building out this whole entire office i went to school for five years to learn how to build things with code i bought two trucks because i wanted to put them together and build one really good truck and now i'm trying to figure out hey maybe i should just build two really good trucks someone please help me i just like to build things and this business is going to be something else that i'm able to build and and grow and that's just what I love to do. I love to build things, whether it's with my hands, with my mind. It's just something I love to do and I'm really happy that I'm able to share the experience in video with y'all. It's just, I don't know, it's a pretty good deal. And the next year I found something else to build. A new business, a team around me to run all these businesses, who knows? I just, just give me something to build and I'll be a happy man. You know, I kind of thought this video was going to be a little bit more active, a little bit more out and about. More similar to the beginning of this video, but considering, you know, I'm still just trying to recover from the sickness, I've come in here and uh, do something that I've been neglecting to do and putting off for a while now. And that is refreshing my Discord server because as a whole, I've just been neglecting it. The thing is, when it first started, there weren't many people here. So I could get by with checking it, you know, once a week, once every other week. And then that soon turned into once a month, once every other month to the point where I'll just pop in randomly, read what people wrote, respond to a few people if it warrants it then that's basically it. And I don't really like that. I'd like to interact with y'all more. Of course, the easiest way to contact me is in the comment section below my most recent video. Within the first 24 to 48 hours, I will respond to any comment that warrants a response. But with the Discord server, I think that'd be a good way for y'all to communicate with each other and with me as well. And it's just one big community. I don't know how this is gonna go from here on out, but I am going to refresh all of this, basically so there is nothing here. Just basically delete everything. So what we're gonna do is come in here and uh, start deleting some of these things. I know many of y'all are probably saying like, wait, he has a uh, Discord server? What's going on here? Well, yes, I have a Discord server. It's linked in the description of all my videos, but I haven't talked about it in probably a year, to be honest with you. All right, gonna remove the welcome channel. Gonna remove the announcements channel. We're gonna keep the new member channel because there's nothing in it except for people joining and I don't mind having that. I, I like having that little bit of history. I'm gonna take out the lounge. I'm gonna take out computer science channel software development channel. So all of that is a gone. And now I am in general chat. And I'm not an avid Discord user. I wanna get better at using Discord so I can communicate with y'all on this particular channel. What I want right now, basically, is for us to sit in here, have a text channel, this is gonna be the lounge, and we're gonna be talking about anything we want. And the lounge topic is anything within reason. This is where I want you to talk about anything, computer science, software development, Hey, what'd you do yesterday? So like small talk, I don't care. As long as it's within reason, within reason, use your common sense. Nothing not safe for work. Nothing that is just plain rude. If it's off topic, there is no topic. So that's fine. But just like I said, use your common sense. Don't say anything in here that you wouldn't say to your mother. Hey everyone, I've just refreshed this Discord server to the point we have only one channel for communication, this one. I'm not an active Discord user, but I plan to begin being more active within this server. 
Use this channel as a means to communicate with each other and me about anything from software development, computer science, or the weather. As long as it's within reason, use common sense. Don't say anything here you wouldn't say to your grandma. I think that's a pretty good message to start off. Send now. And trust me, I won't be using the everyone very often if I have an announcement to make, new video upload or something, then maybe I'll use it. Maybe I'll just throw it in an announcements tab and I'll, or channel and I'll create a new channel just for that like we used to have, but I don't plan to use everyone. I need to make sure that the settings in this server, not anyone can use everyone. This has only been up for one minute and we already have four reactions and one comment. So Sony Michael, oh, two comments. Good to see you here, man. Hey. Cool, we got the Discord server going. That's pretty exciting. You know, I really like this video. It's fun to make, especially that first sequence until I got sick, but even afterwards. I like sharing some of these little day-to-day -day tasks and, and things that are going on behind the scenes that y'all don't see in a regular, hey, three coding tricks video. So, if y'all like this video, hey, go open the poll and say, yes, I like this video. No, just kidding. I'm not gonna put a poll there. And to show me that you like the video, hit the thumbs up button. That is the like button indeed. So hit the thumbs up button if you like the video. Comment something down below. Join the Discord server. I'll try to be active in there. Ask me questions or ask someone else questions or just say, hey, what's up? Subscribe if you aren't already. And uh, I'll see y'all in the next one.